I am honored to be first one today. So I hope that either you had your morning coffee already or that my talk will be interesting enough to give you energy for the day. So who am I and why I want to talk to you about foreign languages on JavaScript conference? As Tomasz mentioned, I graduated from philology, to be more specific, from Indian studies. So I am an Indologist. For those of you who don't know, this is a person who translates Indian languages. So after my graduation, it surprisingly turned out that there are not so many job opportunities for Indologists as I thought. So long story, long story short, I ended up with JavaScript. And when I started learning JavaScript, I noticed that there are so many similarities between JavaScript and foreign languages. And today, I want to take you for the journey into the world of languages. For those of you who have just started learning, I hope it will show you some new approach. Because sometimes we think we have to learn something completely new, but actually it's really similar to what we've already known. And for those of you who have many years of experience in IT, I hope it will be something new, refreshing, and maybe it will be helpful uh, when you have to teach someone. We'll see. I don't have any funny memes in my presentation, so if you're looking for memes, you can like, leave for a coffee break. But I have something better, as I'm a philologist. I have encyclopedia definition. So, what is a language? A language is a system of conventional spoken manual or written symbols by means of which human beings, which means we, are, uh, as members of social groups, uh, express culture. Uh, th so the functions of language include communication, the expressions of identity, play, imagination, and everything what we have, so emotions, ideas, etc. This, of course, relates to a natural language, but isn't it really similar to JavaScript? When we, when we write a code, we put our ideas in the code. So we are communicating something to the program. And we want the program to do something. This is the first thing. Another thing is that we are communicating something to other developers. Because we put our idea in the code, and then other, another developer reads it, and he or she can get it. So language like JavaScript is really similar to a natural language. And one small disclaimer. I am not saying that programming languages and JavaScript, for example, JavaScript and foreign languages are the same. They are not. They have many differences. However, there are some similarities. And three main similarities that we may see is learning first language is the hardest. You probably don't remember when you learned your first language because you were a baby. But then let's try to remember your first uh, journey with, for example, your first foreign language. It was maybe English, maybe German, maybe Russian, I don't know. But you may remember that it was hard. And this is the same with programming languages. So first sight, first step into language is hard. This is something completely new and different. Next thing is that you learn the best by looking at other people. So studying the language is seeing the patterns. When you see, you won't learn, for example, English only from a book. You have to see, you have to speak to people. You have to listen to some audios. I don't know, you have to watch some movies. And the same with JavaScript. You can't learn programming language by reading a book, by doing a course. You have to see the code. You have to use it. And you have to do it in a like, practical way. And a third thing is that the goal 
is to become a native speaker. So you want to be fluent, you want to be the best, you want to have no problems with using the language. I don't want my presentation to be just words, just words in English. So I prepared for you some real life examples from different languages. First thing that is common between programming languages, between JavaScript and between foreign languages is logic. So when having logic, a set of rules, you can build more complex things. What I mean here is that you don't have to know exactly every rule, like every element. You can just know the basic, the general rule, and then you can apply it uh, to your uh, project. So, first example is from Tamil language. For those of, those of you who don't know, Tamil language is a language from no southern India. You may uh, recall something like Tamil Tigers. So, in Tamil, we have suffixes. And when you add a suffix to a word, it changes its meaning. So, uh, here in an example, we have suffix il. That means in when you add it to some word. So, it will mean that something is in something. And first word, I don't know if you may guess, but what does car mean in Tamil? Yeah, it's car. So, in caril, it means in car. Paris, yeah, it's Paris. So, Parisil means in Paris. So now you know the rule. When I give you the word, you can say in Tamil that something is in something. So, for example, in Poznań, that would be Poznanil. So you don't have to know every word, but you know the rule. How does it apply to JavaScript? Let's see. My JavaScript examples will be really simple because I just want to show you the concept. Here you can see that square brackets, when you use them, it indicates an array. So by seeing something like this, you know that it's an array. You don't have to know the elements, you don't have to know actually uh, all the parts of it, but you recognize the pattern. And this gives you elements to build further. Next thing. This is really strange at the first sight, so there are different ways to achieve similar goal. I am, I'm not saying the same, but similar. So you can achieve similar things by using different solutions. And here the example is from English. So in English we have uh, some expressions that can be replaced with phrasal verbs. I remember my first time in a primary school when I had to learn phrasal verbs. I had no idea why. I remember that we had tests and in the back of the book we have all these lists of the words and we have to just learn them by heart and then write them on the test. So, as an example, we have get over, that means recover from. We have take off, that means leave or begin to fly. So you can know what get means, you can know what over means, but if you don't know what is get over, you won't understand the sentence. So you can achieve the similar goal, the similar meaning by using these expressions but you have to know them, and this is the clue. And in JavaScript, oh, sorry, in JavaScript we have arrow functions. So you can create like the usual function. This is a simple function that just sums two elements and returns the sum. So you can have a regular function, let's say, and we can have an arrow function. And here in this example it does exactly the same thing. But when you don't know what arrow does in JavaScript, you won't have idea why there are some arrows in JavaScript. This was my first question when I started my first job as a junior developer. So I was like, where did these arrows come from? And as you can see, this is the same as phrasal verbs. So if you don't know, don't know the pattern, you won't understand what does it, do, does it do. 
Next thing is the opposite of what I have just said, the magic of languages. So things that seem to be similar are really different. So at first sight, two things may seem to be the same, but after a closer look, you discover that they actually differ. And now, example from my favorite language, Hindi. So, Hindi is a synonymous language. That means that they may have 10, 20, 30 words for one word. When you check it in the dictionary, the meaning will be the same. And there are exactly uh, so many examples that they couldn't just choose one. But I decided that speaking about love on JavaScript conference would be a good idea. So, there are at least 10 words in Hindi that mean love. If you check them in the dictionary, it will translate to love. First one, I just uh, chose two, so it will be simpler. We won't go for like into all ten. So, prem uh, comes from Sanskrit, and it means that it's the purest love. For example, to a god, it is used in poems, in poetry, in literature. So you won't use it in a real life. But if you check prem in the dictionary, it will translate into love. The same as mohabbat. Mohabbat comes from Urdu. It also means love if you check it in the dictionary. However, you use it between lovers. For example, married couple. You can use it in uh, Bollywood songs. Uh, it's lighter word than uh, prem. But you will never use it to describe, for example, love between father and child. It's just not appropriate. And if you don't know it, you may do some wrong things. <laughs> so you have these two words, and the first si at first sight, they seem to be just love. They mean the same, but actually, they are not. In JavaScript, very, very, very simple examples, so defining variables. For someone who is new to JavaScript and for someone who have just started, it may be pretty the same. What does it do? It just creates a bunch of variables and assigns different numbers to it. But we all know that this is not the same. We have global variables, we have local vari variables, and we have differences between creating variable using let and const. So this is not the same. And if you, at the first sight, you can just use it, and it will make no difference. But the same as in my example with Hindi, you can use mohabbat to describe love between father and child, but people may don't understand what you are saying. And the same here, you can define a global variable, why not? But in the code later, you may see the trouble that it may cause. And then, next thing, there comes a moment in your life when you are learning programming language or when you are learning foreign language that you meet a native speaker and your word, word turns into ashes because you suddenly realize that there is much more ahead of you than behind you and that you had to learn so many things. Why? In any foreign languages, native speakers speak faster. They use colloquial expressions and abbreviations you just don't get. If you meet native speaker for the first time, native speaker of the language you are learning, you may have an impression that he or she speaks completely different language. Try to understand French people after a year of learning French. I've tried. They actually spoke so fast and they used only a half of words I know. So this is the problem. You are in the society now that uses this different, strange language. And you may have a feeling that you know it, you know the basics, but actually this is not the everyday language they use. And how does it relate to JavaScript? I mean, in JavaScript, it's pretty much the same. 
So you think you know JavaScript, and then you start your first work as a junior developer. And then they start to tell you, you know, OK, that's, this may be correct, but we actually don't do it. We do it just differently. And the example is really simple. So this is just a for loop and for each to, con to log all the items from the array. And this is just to illustrate that to these two uh, solutions, like they are, they are normal solutions, let's say, but the second one is faster and will be more used in the code. And this was my first impression when I started my job that, uh, and for example, I had all this for each and filter and reduce, and then I go, went deeper into functional programming, for example. I just had no idea what is going on. Why my five lines are being changed to one line and they say this is better. So I was used as a philologist to, um, to this way that then when something is longer, it's actually prettier. Yeah, in the code is, is, it's different, but in the foreign language, meeting this native speaker is your, can be like a wall. So you stop and you see and you realize that you actually can't understand, you can't talk to these people because they speak different language. They seem to be like a closed tribe that has its own culture. And in, in JavaScript, we have code review. And code review, this is like meeting, meeting native speakers that will tell you how they do it in everyday life. And this may be something that you just didn't know. So I hope this gives you some new look at the JavaScript and the foreign languages and that you will use it somehow uh, in learning, in studying, and that you will find your own examples of these similarities in your work and in your life. So thank you very much. You can contact me uh, this email. You can find me on my blog and on Facebook group, as Thomas, Thomas mentioned. So thank you very much. If JavaScript is similar to foreign languages, like what are the advantages for us as developers from this kind of knowledge? Yeah, for me, the biggest advantage was uh, that I could take the same approach as uh, in learning JavaScript as in learning foreign languages. When I've seen these similarities, I could apply the same mechanisms into learning. So for example, I've always learned foreign languages best by doing practical things. I hated the list of uh, words, and I've tried to use the same approach into learning JavaScript. So not reading books, but actually building something. OK, cool. I especially like the point about Code viewers with advanced developers as a native speakers of the language. There was also another question, like what other languages would you like to learn in the future? I suppose the question is about foreign languages, programming languages, and JavaScript, right? Oh, this is the hard question. Like when it comes to foreign languages, I think I had enough a little bit. <laughs> okay. Because I've learned like French, English, German, Chinese, Sanskrit, Tamil. And JavaScript. And JavaScript. <laughs> and when it comes to programming languages, I don't know. I, I was thinking about basics of Python and Node.js maybe, but who knows what the future holds. OK, cool. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for Joanna Thank for you. this amazing talk. <laughs>